Hey everybody, and welcome back to another Max Velocity weather forecast. And in today's forecast, we'll be breaking down a huge storm that'll be coming to the United States early next week. And this storm is going to cause a variety of problems, including the potential for significant severe weather all the way from the Midwest back into the Southeast United States. In addition to this, this storm will bring the potential for a winter storm. This could bring some snowfall and even a little bit of ice to areas in the Midwest, which is where we're also going to see some severe weather and as well as maybe the northern region of the Great Lakes. I'll be giving you the latest breakdown on everything that you need to know in this forecast and let's begin first with what's happening right now in the United States today and we'll begin with the East Coast and this is really the only area that's pretty active in the United States today and this is mainly due to the fact we have more ridging that is building across much of the United States so a lot of you this weekend are actually going to have fantastic weather before that large storm early next week. Before the the time being we do have some showers and a couple of thunderstorms most of the thunderstorm activity has shifted off coast but we do still have some remaining showers passing across areas in the mid-atlantic region back into the northeast but a lot of that will be moving offshore as we go throughout the rest of today back over in the midwest not really much happening here we do have some cloud cover but overall it's pretty minimal stuff we're not talking really about much rainfall out of that for tonight and then back over in the southwest back over near the pacific ocean on the west coast of the united states many of these areas have been dealing with tons of rain for the last several weeks now and we still do have a little bit of moisture kicking into the west coast of california that'll allow for a bit more rainfall through the weekend but the big storm that's really causing a lot of this is actually pretty far offshore so we're not really going to see a whole lot of rain at least for today and tomorrow but it is going to be something to watch for as we go throughout the later half of the weekend and as well as into early next week all right let's talk more about the weather pattern that'll be impacting the united states over the next several days and look at that we are going to look at the jet stream this gives us an idea of the weather patterns that are happening across the United States. So as we go into early next week, things are going to get quite interesting. I mentioned this at the top of the forecast, a pretty large storm is coming, and this is all going to originate from the Pacific Ocean, and you don't really notice it here going into Monday morning. You'll notice it more as we go into Tuesday, but notice this as we go into Monday morning. We do have a strong high pressure system that'll be dominating much of the United States. That includes areas in the Great Plains, the Midwest, the Ohio Valley, the Southeast, and even on the East Coast. A lot of those areas will be dealing with the potential for record-breaking temperatures. Yes, there are going to be some areas like DFW in Texas. Those areas will get into the low 90s on Monday. It is going to get hot in some areas. Once we go into Tuesday, though, that storm moves inland, and we're eventually going to be watching for this disturbance as we go into Tuesday into Wednesday across the Great Plains and as well as the Midwest and into the Ohio Valley for the potential for severe weather, both Tuesday and Wednesday. There also could even be a risk as we go into Thursday along the east coast of the United States. Once we go into Thursday, to Friday, eventually that system moves out when we'll be having to watch for another low pressure system to move across areas in the central plains. Doesn't look to be nearly as concerning for the time being. Now, long term, the European model is actually indicating the following week, so going closer to March 3rd or 4th, and there could be another large storm. This is super uncertain, though, since we're still talking about over 10 days out, things could easily change. But I do want to mention we are getting close to severe weather season, and it's about to get a whole lot more active over the next couple of weeks and as well as the next couple of months really with severe weather and the winter storm threat should start to die down as we head closer to spring with that being said we do still have a chance for a winter storm with this next storm going to early next week we'll be talking about that here in just about a minute now let's talk more about that severe weather potential for next week and we'll begin with tossing trampolines on tacos tuesday we do currently have a slight risk of severe weather from southwest michigan and the chicago suburbs all the way back through a very small sliver of northeast texas this area has actually shrunk just a little bit over the last 24 hours with the latest outlook but with that being said we do still have a slight risk of severe weather across this entire area that is a two out of five on the severe weather scale the main concern that we're really concerned about right now as we go into tuesday is the potential for damaging winds and also a few tornadoes those are the main concerns right for right now from the midwest back into the southern plains more details on that here in just a second and going into wacky weather wednesday we have another slight risk of severe weather this is from kentucky back into our Arkansas and as well as Louisiana and for both of these days they're both pretty different in their own nature because Tuesday will be primarily discrete supercells that's really going to be the greatest concern and why is that concerning well discrete supercells typically produce a greater tornado risk that's what we have to watch for more closely on Tuesday once we go into Wednesday I do think we're going to be watching for more of a linear setup meaning more of a line of storms and I think that line of storms will be more capable of numerous damaging winds so I do think overall the greatest threat of severe weather will 
will be on Tuesday. But with that being said, I do think we still have to watch Wednesday very closely because a linear line of storms doesn't necessarily mean we'll have a higher tornado risk. In fact, it'll probably be lower on Wednesday comparatively to Tuesday. But I do think we're gonna have to watch for more of that numerous damaging wind threat, which could ob obviously send some flying trampolines across areas anywhere from Mississippi back all the way up into Kentucky. So be mindful of that as we go into Wednesday. All right, let's talk more about what the storm looks like early next week. Let's go through the future radar. And I do want to point out this entire weekend, really no big events are in the forecast. So I'm not really going to show you this weekend. Let's just hop right into Tuesday morning with this large and strong storm. Notice this as we go into Tuesday morning. We are actually watching two different areas for the low pressure center. It's actually kind of interesting. We're going to have a little bit of energy come off the Rocky Mountains and another batch of energy come out of Canada. And notice this is the main area of low pressure. It's going to be located back up in Minnesota as we go into Tuesday morning. Morning. One thing we need to watch for going into Tuesday morning is the snow potential. For now, the winter storm threat, if we do see a winter storm, it'll primarily be focused back up into Canada, back through the Rocky Mountains, and as well as into the upper Midwest. I think those will be the main areas to be watching for a winter storm threat. With that being said, there will still be a potential for snow as far south as areas like the Chicago suburbs. This is what it looks like going around lunchtime on Tuesday. Notice that snow will continue to ramp up. Here's your low pressure center. It's going to be located back over in Wisconsin. And one thing we are going to have to watch for going into late Tuesday is those th that threat of severe weather to start to ramp up. Notice this around 3 o'clock or so, those storms start to fire up near areas in the Chicago area. And to check that out, we're going to go in closer view. So notice this as we get closer to 3 o'clock. Again, a few showers and thunderstorms start to fire off near the Chicago area. Eventually getting closer to rush hour, thunderstorms are going to continue to ramp up anywhere from Chicago and even into southern parts of Illinois, back into southern Michigan. Main concern, again, will be damaging winds, but there probably will at least be some sort of low to medium threat of tornadoes as we go into Tuesday afternoon and evening. By the late evening into the overnight hours, most of those storms move to the east. Damaging winds will become more of a concern as we go past sunset. And as we go into the overnight hours, Tuesday into Wednesday morning, snow will be a possibility after the severe weather for those in northern Illinois back into Michigan. So it's going to get pretty interesting. And eventually, as we go into Wednesday um, afternoon, that snow will continue to move off to the north and east. And eventually, that snow potential will start to wind down. But notice this as we go into Tuesday evening, around 9 o'clock or so p.m. Thunderstorms will still be ongoing in like southern Michigan, back into the Ohio Valley, but we're not done with thunderstorms there. There will be more storms as far south and west as areas like Arkansas and even into northeast Texas, where damaging winds will be a possibility and perhaps even a couple of tornadoes. And once we go into Wednesday morning, that line of storms continues to march to the east. I do think overall, though, that line of storms is really going to be more of a scattered to perhaps numerous threat of damaging winds and a lower tornado tornado risk overall and then once we go into Wednesday afternoon and evening those storms move into areas like the northeast and as well as along the east coast where snow will also be possible on the back side of this low pressure system and notice we actually do have a chance for this to go to a bomb cyclone what that means is that the pressure drops 24 millibars over 24 hours this is Tuesday at 6 p.m 986 millibars if we go 24 hours later 969 millibars so it does drop quite a bit will it go down 24 millibars we'll have to wait and see but that is going to be something we have to watch for as well another disturbance is likely next week at the very tail end of the week. I don't really think we're going to see a whole lot of snow with this one. I think it's going to be more of showers and thunderstorms. And then once we go into early the following week, again, this is extremely uncertain as of right now in terms of what might happen with that. By the way, this is a chance of seeing greater than one inch of snowfall going to Tuesday into Wednesday. Right now, the chance is not really that high, mainly due to the fact there is still quite a bit of uncertainty with this disturbance. But overall, for areas like Chicago, you're about 20% chance of seeing greater than an inch of snowfall. Back over into Wisconsin, Wisconsin ranges anywhere from 20 to 25 percent upwards of about 90 percent closer to the lakes so just keep that in mind here's that severe weather setup by the way the low level jet will be cranking Tuesday evening that does mean that we have pretty strong winds at the lower levels meaning that the rotation will be a bit stronger and a little bit easier for tornadoes to develop so this will be something to watch for across areas in the Midwest in particular even back down in Arkansas even though it's a westerly flow we will have a chance at least there for maybe an isolated tornado or two the greatest tornado risk as of now would be probably back over in like central Illinois with that being said how high is that tornado risk it's still a bit uncertain because of the timing with this disturbance there is still definitely some uncertainty with the, the setup in this particular case once we go into Tuesday as well the dew points are not extremely favorable for buoyancy in the Midwest and this is one of the biggest things is that the ingredients are not perfect for the severe weather setup the dew points are in the mid to upper 50s which is plenty for severe weather but usually we need dew points above 60 for there to be a good enough amount of buoyancy for maybe more of a significant severe weather threat so right now the dew points currently forecasted to be around the upper 50s low 60s it's
it's kind of on the fringe there so we'll have to monitor that pretty closely as well for the midwest they'll definitely be high enough down in areas like arkansas but the setup there is a little bit less favorable i would say for tornadoes here's the instability in the atmosphere as well this gives you an idea of the storm fuel it's basically like putting gasoline into a vehicle it's what fuels severe storms we're gonna have plenty of instability tuesday evening for there to be some severe weather back up in the midwest and also enough down back in areas like arkansas we will have a chance for severe weather so make sure that you're subscribed to the channel like the video we'll be keeping you posted with the latest over the next few days as the storm continues to develop and obviously there is gonna be a chance for a live stream next week so make sure to click the bell icon down below so you're notified if and when we do go live